Aisha Mukhtar is grilling our subs. It's messed up. We're trying our best out here. <laughs> Are we on now? <laughs> yeah, we're on. So what's uh, on the thing? Am I the bottom one? My mic is the bottom one? Yeah. All right. Now Ismail can turn on. You can turn on. I don't see your mic here, though, on the audio mixer. No, like, we're all, we're all this one, the, mm. the bottom one. Okay, good. Oh, that's all of us? Yeah. Okay. Good. And I control the main one from here. It was on purpose, guys. By design. We're figuring stuff out, yeah. Audio's a go. Uh, camera's charged today. Luxury. Today we're going to talk about... Um, Affairs of the Ummah, which is an obligation for every Muslim in general to be involved and to be aware of the obligations of the Ummah. So that's what we're going to talk about today. As soon as I get my iPad, you got it, Esmai? Yes. Five Pillars UK. Co. Yeah. All right. Sayyid Ali Pareen. Waikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, you guys, listen up. I was actually invited to Hajj. Hajj ministry, the government Hajj ministry, is so fed up with Mutawif. Okay, they're so fed up with Mutawif that they uh, they got involved. Thank you. What do you mean you were invited? And they, the 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 Americans, the English speakers are suffering so much. No one knows what's going on. Like Hajj is easy. Eight of Dhul Hajj, you go down to Mina. Then you go to Arafah. Then you go to Muzdalifah. Then, depending on Madhab, you could either go to Mecca right away or you go back to Mina, depending on your Madhab. How long you stay in Muzdalifah is, in each, is, is different in each Madhab. Okay. So, they invited some Western uh, Imams. They said, we need some Western Imams. We need to spread them out so they could help these Hujjaj. Okay. So, I get a call two days ago. Call me, urgent text message. So I called my friend back. I said, what's going on? He said, listen, uh, nine of us are going and you're invited. I said, you're coming me now on the seventh, sixth of Dhul Hijjah, fifth of Dhul Hijjah, when I have commitments and responsibilities, right? Like I would love to go to Hajj. Anyone would love to go to Hajj. But when you got commitments and responsibilities, you can't just drop them. So this is too late, man. So uh, at least I felt, alhamdulillah, well, at least I, if there is any waswas of mine that, um, or any thought that I got expelled from the hajj, because you know hajj is by invitation. So if you're not going, it feels bad, right? That alhamdulillah, I was like, oh, well, at least that is gone because I, I got the invitation back. But I couldn't do it because anyway, there's another thing too. You go there, you're not going to. You're not going to actually be able to focus. It's so helter skelter. I can't even help the people. I'm telling you, my way of doing things would be to go completely rogue. You can't go to people who are unorganized and try to get organized or try to find your way in. If I was to go, I would have went completely rogue. I said, "Listen, I'm taking over. I'm going to take over everything, right? Uh, like, like for for yourself. So you need help. Listen, okay. Here's your tent." And you would have to go completely rogue. There's no other way to do it. Okay. Um, so I was like, no, I don't, I, I, firstly, I can't get involved in this. And secondly, I don't want to get involved in some absolute chaos. It's a they, they're calling you to clean up, yeah. basically. Yeah. They're basically calling you to mop up. And that's like, and then I don't even know how I'm going to be treated. Like, am I going to have a plane ticket back? Am I going to have a ride? Am I going to end up paying for everything myself? Am I going to pay my own rides? I guarantee you are going to end up paying your own rides. You're going to end up paying your own food. Just, there's no order. So when there is no law and order, stay away. That's the first thing. What was the second thing I had to tell you guys? It's invited to hedge. Can't remember what the second thing was. But let's get going. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi وصحبه ومن ولا اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به الوقت وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج 
وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما اسماعيل هاروي بوك اس اب اجين ها ام تراين ام تراين اكسباند ذا ها دو اكسباند ذس ثينجز اوكي سو ليتس سي هاو اور انستغرامرز ار دوين وي جوت هالو وايت Zakaria is here. Now let's go to our YouTubers and see how the YouTubers are doing. Firstly, our sponsors, number one. Uh, Oz, you know how you got the sponsors? Patreon.com backslash Safina Society. That's how you're going to be part of um, pitching in to this thing. Okay. Patreon.com backslash Safina Society. Mecca Books. Coupon code Safina. Okay. And then professors one to one dot com. Today we're reading the news of the Ummah and the affairs of the Ummah, and we're given some kind of commentary. And usually, the way I like to look at it is, what is the hukum? What's the Sharia ruling? Yeah, keep moving me over, Oz. Even more. Oh, even more. Even more. There you go. No, no, not that's too much. There you go. Perfect. Today, let's read the first article. A big hullabaloo. That Abdullah bin Baya has visited or met with a Zionist rabbi in London. Okay. So, of course, you know, he gets a lot of slack every time he meets with one of these. Because the, the, the Muslims don't like our scholars meeting with the enemy. That's how simple it is of a fact. And this guy, Ephraim Miraviz, that's his name. Ephraim Mervis is a massive Zionist who is all about normalization deals between Israel, UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan. Now, we're not a news website, right? But we have to learn how to analyze things. We have to learn how to... Um, you know what you could do, Oz? You could remove the Patreon when we do this. And just put the picture. You don't have to put the text. Right, um, we have to learn how to analyze things, and we have to look at: is there a ruling of Sharia? Okay, that is there a ruling of Sharia that we could learn here? Is there a principle that we could learn? And we're not here to like to blame anything, although some people may think this is completely blameworthy, right? All right. Bin Baya heads the forum, the UAE-based forum uh, for promoting peace in Muslim societies the record of Israel is a move to a more peaceful existence so that's the first question do you want to coexist with these people I don't want to coexist with them the only coexistence is war to be honest with you right that's the only co that's the, that's the coexistence okay is war is that what they're bringing to isn't that what they're bringing to, to the Palestinians to the uh, Ahl Gaza And what's our business, you know, with being at peace? Okay, here's the ruling we have in Sharia. And Sheikh Saeed Ramadan al-Bouti has something on this. Okay? Now, some people I know, many people say, oh, this is such irris so irresponsible for you to say war. What are they bringing to Ahl Gaza? Right? Explain that. So don't blame someone like uh, a regular Muslim who's not in politics, not in this world business, Right? Of, of, uh, and then just looking at it objectively, they're bringing war to the Muslims, to the Palestinians. If one party brings war to another Muslim party, then peace with that party becomes forbidden. Sheikh Saeed Ramadan Bouti has an entire lecture on this. Okay, he has an entire lecture on this. You have to remember about. You have to remember this. Okay. That once if a party of Muslims is being abused, you're not allowed to go and make peace with the abuser. Now this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, it also shows us the implication that there will be eventually different Muslim political entities. And the Prophet wasallam said the Sultan and the, and, the, and the Quran will split. And the, and the Quran, it says, وَإِن طَائِفَةٌ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِ اِخْتَتَلَ سُورَةِ الْحُجُرَاتِ Okay. If two parties of the Muslims fight one another, 
فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا Alright? Then rectify between the two of them. If they wake up and become peaceful, good. If not, then you have to fight them. Fight the one that is aggressing on the other. So that, that, these set of verses in Surah Al-Hujurat also indicate there will be different Muslim political entities. And so this hadith of the Messenger وسلم, which as I said already, Sheikh Zayed al Buti has an entire lecture on it, specifically for all these groups and all these political entities that are running, like Egypt was set the first trend, right? Camp David in the 70s to make peace with this nation. Now some will say, oh, we yeah, are so easy so easy for you to say about talk about this right while well, you're outside of politics listen is anyone in pol- does anyone have a gun to his head to be in politics right Oz you can put the whole screenshot right to make life easier for you like like you had it before huh no oh, no problem you can do your, do your thing but does anyone have a gun to your head to be in politics? No one's got a gun to your head. It's like, look, think about it. Allah's going to take you to account. No one is putting a gun to your head to do anything. So you have complete control of your tongue, your hands, your, your feet. Your feet walked to these meetings, right? Your hands moved and signed this treaty, whatever. That's going to testify for you against you. No, there's no gun to your head. And sometimes, if you're going to harm other people, then you get killed. In Sharia, someone says, all right, I'm going to kill you if you don't wear gold and smoke uh, marijuana. You wear gold and smoke marijuana. It doesn't hurt anybody, right? Some of the brothers out there are like, where can I get that guy? (laughs) Put that gun to my head. But if someone puts a gun to my head and says, shoot so-and-so, or take an action that will lead to so-and-so getting shot. Well, the, the law says, get shot. That's what the law says. All we could do is explain to you what the law says. Hopefully Allah doesn't put us in that situation. But we have to remember that, and I think that it applies until now. Okay? Again, some people will say, well, we're in a situation. Fine. If you're in a situation, then you have to admit your sinfulness. If I'm a ruler... And all of a sudden things turn. If I give up the rule, then people worse than me will take over. And if I don't make this treaty with them, they'll blow my brains out and we won't have a country, right? Okay, don't, ju- don't justify it. Just say, I, I'm a political leader. I'm weak. This is what I have to do. I don't see that um, the shiuch that go to these meetings... They're not in that situation. They put themselves in that situation, right? Like they went for these meetings. No one, they weren't forced. There's, there's a similar situation yeah. that we dealt with at Rutgers yeah. when I was in college. Very similar in the sense that back, back then, the MSA, the Muslim Student Association, yeah. um, wanted to do interfaith. Who? They wanted to do interfaith. Who is that? The MSA. MSA wanted to do an interfaith meeting MSA with you. I'm not a big fan of interfaith. Right, I know I'm on the same page. But they, they wanted to do interfaith with uh, a Jewish group. Right? So at Rutgers campus back then, uh, from what I remember, they had Hillel. Hillel and Chabad, right? Chabad, yeah. Chabad is Orthodox Jews, Hillel is conservative or reform? Something. Uh, One of the two. The thing about Hillel is they're very staunchly Zionist. Yeah. They have Israeli flags hanging out of their, uh, their, their building. They, they celebrate the uh, Independence Day of Israel every year. Mm-hmm. Very, very pro Zionist. Chabad is very, at least for, very publicly, very apolitical. So Chabad is apolitical, right. and they don't do interfaith. Right, and so I appreciate that I, more. And so the thing was, when the MSA, I don't know, if, I don't know if they, if they do or don't, but the, the, the MSA at the time wanted to do interfaith with Hina, right? And there was a, a huge opposition from the Muslim student body saying you shouldn't do this. Um, and if you want to do interfaith, go do with Chabad. Like they're yeah. Supposedly apolitical. Yeah. So Same here. Why would you willingly to a hardcore Zionist organization and do interfaith? And all that it does is it promotes their image better. Yeah. Because it makes it look like, hey, we're not, we don't hate. That's true. 
and you get nothing back. A bunch of pansies. <laughs> a bunch of pansies. And so, and that's, that's kind of a similar situation where we're, we're walking to, I mean, if you want, uh, all these shiuch and scholars and even Muslim countries that want to do their with Jewish groups. Yeah. There's tons of Jewish populations around the world that have more friends than Zionists, or some of many of them that are anti-Zionists. There's Jewish populations in the Arab world. There's Jewish populations in Morocco. There's Jewish populations in Iran. There's all these places have Jewish populations. Go do your interfaith with their leadership over there. And explain to me the value of this interfaith di- dialogue. I'm just saying if you wanted to, that's where you there's only one. There's only one form of interfaith that I find has any value. Can you throw me that, by the way? There's only one form of interfaith that has any value. That is, I got the masjid here. There's a church next door, and there. Thank you. There's a church next door, and there's a synagogue, you know, next door. If they they they're just general apolitical groups then to get to know, hey, we're the mosque next door, just to have peaceful neighborly relations. That's it, right? That's it. I don't see any other value to this thing. Because why would we as Islam soil our brand by being associated with theologies we, we believe are the problem, are the sources of atheism in the world is a false theology. A false religion is, is the worst thing for the world. It's a misrepresentation uh, of Allah, right? So, if you have the true representation, why would you go mingle with the false representation? People will assign you all into one bucket, and that's what happens. They 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 put and they imagine, oh, you know, all the Muslims, Christians, and Jews, it's all the same thing. How many people tell you talk like that? So many, right? Yeah, so many of them talk like that. Muslims, Christians, Jews, all the same thing, right? Why would you want your your brand or your um, which you have to offer to be associated with that. It doesn't make any sense. Good. All right, next. Chat Chief Rabbi Ephraim. I keep pushing buttons on this uh, t- device that keeps moving everything. Okay. Said the Abraham Accords marked a paradigm shift in cooperation between Jews and Muslims. This is to me like the this is blasphemous. Like, why would we cooperate with their people? Are we that weak? We're that weak. You want to cooperate with a guy who's slapping you and killing your people. Okay? He's happy about it. That's a problem. If he's happy about it, it's a problem. Uh, the meeting was an exceptionally special occasion in a spirit of friendship. The wolf... If the wolf says, me and the sheep are friends, you got a problem. The meeting took place in London to strengthen international effort to ensure freedom of religion and belief. What a load of nonsense. There's nothing less that can be talked about. Thomas Harrigan, our man from here, he says, what about interfaith on political issues? Abortion, LGBT, other religions have similar position on. I would consider that a political meeting, right? I would consider that a po- political policy meeting, okay? Uh, shockwave, the new X Man. If someone threatens to kill you, if you don't apostate, are you allowed to accept death? You are allowed to accept death, and you are allowed to ut- to utter words of kufr, okay? And then make Toba after that. You are allowed to do both. And it happened in the time of the Prophet wasallam to the great Sahabi, Ammar bin Yasir. Ammar bin Yasir was being tortured so badly, all right, so badly, that they said to him, say that this beetle that's walking across the sand is your God. So he said it. This beetle is my God. And... He felt so bad. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Oh, Master of Allah, they tortured me so badly, I said it. The Prophet ﷺ said, And what do you find in your heart? He said, It's filled with Iman. Right? He said, Then you're forgiven. In our, if you're going to suffer self harm, it doesn't have to just be death, by the way. It's not just death. If you're going to suffer self harm, that is 
a worthy amount of harm that will be painful for you, then you are allowed to utter such words and then make toba later. But you are not allowed to hurt other people. Okay. And this conference is a sham because it also includes Ahmadiyya and Baha'is, people who are not even Muslim. The whole thing is a sham. Like, yeah, any Murtad groups. The whole thing is a disgusting sham, in my opinion, without any you know intent to go smear and disrespect Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayah, who is at, le- at the very least is our elder and at the very least has served this ummah more than any of us have ever served it. So he does just deserve that respect. And he's somebody that, I'm not going to say I doubt his intent. I don't doubt his intention. But political meetings have nothing to do with intention. It has to do with, like, what is the meeting and what's the result of it, right? And I think that that type of thing is, um, this type of meeting to me is... Um, Is his mic up? Turn his mic up a little bit, us, because his voice is low. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the image that you're portraying, nobody... The image. Not gonna understand that. You know, oh, these guys okay, just go for the pictures. That's what I'm saying. It's a photo op. And, uh, and, and to put, the, put it on their newspapers and whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take another story here. Let's go international first, and then we go national. Today, we shift... From the UAE, and and here we have, again, I'll tell you what people will say. There you go with the Sufis sellouts. That's what they're going to say. I guarantee you, that's what they're going to say. Even though he he is a he has tasawwuf, of course, he's not like a Sufi leader, but he has tasawwuf in his pedigree, and he's an Ashadi scholar, and a Madhabi scholar. But he's he has some modernist people call it modernist fatawa. Okay. Um, I could tell you that that's commonly stated amongst circles of scholarship. They're not all, always in agreement with his fatawa. But they're going to say, there you go, the Sufis again. Selling out the ummah politically. So weak politically, right? Uh, if you're a scholar, your public image really matters. You can't just say, there's a wisdom, there's a wisdom, there's a wisdom. Right? It doesn't work like that. Oh, but he may have his own wisdom. This is not mysticism, right? If there's a wisdom, am I dumb? Can you spell it out to me so I can support you, right? Next subject, Afghanistan. Confirms Sharia will be rule, the ruling system. All right, and they have a new flag for Afghanistan, apparently. And it's the, it's the white flag with the black shahada on it. Okay. At least that's what Five Pillars and has put up here. So is this, in fact, the, the new flag, or is that just... A, yeah, it is. The Islamic Emirate flag is what Oz just put up. That's their new flag. It's the white versus the green of Saudi. Saudi's white on green. This is white on black, which I actually object to the name of Allah and his prophet waving in the wind like that, birds coming and doing whatever they want. It's not, a pro, it's not the right way to do things. You don't put the name of Allah on flags like that. It's going to be on leaflets. So they could have put something else, but nonetheless... Okay, that's just a side thing. But I think those symbols of Islam are important, right? There is an 11-point declaration that has come at the end of a three-day meeting of over 3,000 people in Kabul. The declaration of Bay'a, allegiance to Hibatullah Akhunzada, the leader of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. That's the new official name, the Islamic Imara of Afghanistan. What is an Imara? It's a land that has an Emir. It's not a monarchy, right? And other things, okay? Number two, Sheikh Hibatullah will rule by Sharia. Obviously, all this is very general, extremely general, because the Sharia is very flexible. The Islamic system of governance has internal legitimacy. It has provided security and end, and an end to the culture of corruption in the government. It has established a powerful central government in Afghanistan. Okay. Four. The countries of the region, the world, and the UN are asked to recognize the Islamic Emirate as a legitimate system. Now, I, I, don't, I don't agree with this. Don't ask. Demand. Right? 
This is weakness. You ask, that means you could be told no. Okay? No, no asking, demanding. They want leg- uh, to be recognized as a legitimate system and to positively interact and remove sanctions from Afghanistan. The frozen funds of the Afghan nation should be released in support of reconstruction. Before you say something like that, and, and I'm not going critical, I'm going, in general, I support Muslims who are praying and fasting and observing the Sharia as a general support. Not necessarily a specific of everything, but in general, yeah, that I'm going to support a general, anyone with a generally Islamic direction over a secular alternative. Okay. All right. So, when you're making that demand, what is your chess move against them? Or else what? You have to answer the or else before. You better do this or else what? Because you know that they're in Western Asia say, or else what? Right? So you have to have that uh, answer, uh, that question answered first. Okay? And he says, we continue to express our strong support for preventing the production, cultivation, and trafficking of drugs. All right, very nice, but I still... Um, who worded this thing? You're the Taliban. Give it some strength. We are stopping the trafficking of drugs, and anyone who is caught in our land trafficking drugs, his neck will be slit. You're the Taliban. Talk like the Taliban, right? <laughs> okay? What is this, uh, this um, PR uh, stuff? But anyway, whatever. I'm just saying, this is not a serious critique, but... It's really good so far what they're saying. And I don't know what's going on. So someone say, oh, well, they, they abuse this, that, and the other. I don't know any of what's going on. I'm just reading this. Okay. Five, neighboring countries in the world are requested not to allow the activities of opponents of the Islamic Emirate. We also ask neighboring countries, the region and the world, not to interfere in the internal affairs of Afghanistan and not to allow anyone to operate against Afghanistan from their soil. Or else what? Right? How about, you know, we got missiles, we got bombs, we got some crazy people at the control panel, right? Don't mess around. Islamic Emirate is an Islamic ruling system that dominates the entire country and provides security and justice. Armed opposition to the system is rebellion and corruption on the earth. Can I add another sentence? And will be fought and punished by death if captured. Number seven. Regarding the group known as ISIS, which has carried out bloody suicide attacks against the Islamic Emirate and religious minorities in Afghanistan, it is a seditious phenomenon. ISIS are like modern-day Kharijites and a false sect. It's wonderful. And any help and connection with ISIS is forbidden. Let me add. If you are caught, you will be beheaded. Alian, you want to join us here? Eight, scholars who instigate controversial issues through social media are asked to refrain from making statements that cause anxiety and differences among people. Let me add a sentence. Let me rephrase that. Scholars who instigate controversial issues through social media okay, will be punished and their fingertips will be at risk. Because that's what you type with, with your fingers, right? We're going to, take, we're going to expand the hadood to your fingertips. The Islamic Emirate has been asked to pay attention to modern education, health, agriculture, industry, economy, the rights of minorities of women, refugees, and the whole nation in light of the Islamic Sharia. I'm also not in favor of that wording. Like you've been asked as if there's some authority above you, like telling you what to do or asking you. Say no, we know best and we will take care of our education, health, women's rights, refugees, And we don't need foreign nations to tell us what to do. Isn't that better wording? Not, we've been asked. I'm saying this as constructive criticism. (laughs) The Islamic Emirate has been further, has been asked to further strengthen the existing unity among themselves. What do you mean asked? Who are you obeying? Right? Who are you taking orders from? We've been asked. No, we're doing this because we want to do it. And we don't care what anyone thinks. That's how you operate, right? And you keep talking like that until people start respecting it. Number 11, political figures who went abroad are asked to consider the situation as an opportunity to return 
and avoid biased activities. Here's how I would like it worded. Dissenting political figures who have gone abroad to foment revolution and rebellion. We know where you are and you are being hunted down. (laughs) How's that? Man, you would have... A Twitter account would be on fire if you release public statements like that, right? <laughs> okay, next topic. So Afghanistan is going... The entire, every single Islamic country is going one way. And that's not a good way. And Afghanistan, like them, hate them, you want to call them what you want to call them, doesn't mean I have to agree with everything that they do, Okay but they are going another direction, right? And what does the hadith say? Who is going to be the first supporters of Imam al-Mahdi? They will go to Imam al-Mahdi and support him. You won't even have to ask the people of this area of Persia, which in the time of the Prophet was called? Huh? Khurasan. Khurasan. Okay. Khurasan. All right, again. Wallahi, get me the WhatsApp number for this president so I can help you. Look what it says. Afghanistan leader pledges to defend Islamic system no matter what the cost. No. Wrong wording. We're going to play great defense today. No. We're going to score and win and beat you. Which you should say, Afghanistan leader, what it should say is something like, has massive worldwide plan to spread message. Okay? No, forget it. That means the future is not happening now. Make it now. Like, for example, Afghanistan leader updates world on massive Dawah mission. Well, like, it's happening now, right? That's how you do things. By the way, if you can see his picture, this is what he looks like. He's young. He's the leader. Okay? Yep, just, I, oh, my. I see. Yeah. I keep touching stuff on this, yeah, on this right. tablet. That's, that's your leader. Yeah, you got to have right? some leverage to talk like that, though. Bro. You got That's why I said prepare your. Don't even talk. Yeah, you know, you know, it's a good example of this. Yeah. I don't know if you saw recently Finland and Sweden tried to join NATO, and then Turkey said, to, you know, NATO has to be unanimous, right? Yeah. To join, and Turkey basically took advantage of this because for many years the EU has been blocking yeah. Turkey. So now Turkey is it's in, the ball's in their court. Yeah. So they basically told Finland and and uh, Sweden no, you can't get. They it. said no. And then just for the sake even, of saying even, no, uh, Erdogan put out a statement at some point. Yeah. Said don't even bother coming to lobby your your, <laughs> your case. Yeah. Where, where the answer is no. Unfortunately, they eventually did. They got so, through. Yeah, they yeah. got through, but they, they they had to like they basically leveraged a bunch of things. They said, yeah. You, have to, you know, again, agree or disagree with with the political motivations of Turkey, but like they said, you have to you have to a send us uh, people who we consider terrorists. You have to yeah. send them back to us. You have to give us access to European weapons that you haven't been giving us mm-hmm. access to. You have to give, and so they signed this whole yep. memorandum of understanding. Uh, and then after that, that's when they said, okay, go ahead, admit them into it. But it was, it was like, that's, that's kind of the leverage. If you're going to trash yeah. talk, got to have that leverage. If you're going to trash talk <laughs> and you're going to talk this big game, that, oh, or else what has yeah. to be answered, yep. right? And the blowback of the or else what has to be calculated too. Because if you say, or else, well, or else what? I'm going to bomb the lights out of your country, right? All right, are you really going to face the blowback of that, right? right. Are you really going to do it? Right, so this stuff is no different than a lot of other things that people do when they talk a big game. But I would much rather that than releasing a polite, you know, uh, press release. I don't know if it was translated right, but I mean, so here he goes. Um, oh, okay, I like this statement that he says. Wallahi, I like this. He says. I have pledged not to waver from the path of Islam even if our country is attacked with an atomic bomb. But still, the visual, why create the visual of being attacked with an atomic bomb? Like it's defensive. The language is defensive. The visual is defensive. Okay? I'm telling you, I'll take the, uh, the consulting contract. <laughs> Give me the consulting contract. I would love to be it's their Twitter... Uh, but I need to know what is your or else. This is this is by the way the uh, <coughs> the, the theme of, of Muslim nations. Yeah. You know, there's the Quran, 
Muhammad and Rasulullah were there with him. Ashad al-Kufar. We're the opposite now. We're the exact opposite. You were the exact opposite. Yeah. You're, you're, you're tough on your own people yeah. and then you, you capitulate in the face of your enemy. Yeah. So. Oh, no. Could you turn up, uh, is his mic turned up? Is yeah, his mic turned up? You can he hear just me? talks very well. Someone yeah, is saying yeah, he's yeah. 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 I'm going to have to yell. They're saying it's Ryan. They don't realize. They think it's Ryan. Yeah. It's not Ryan. Anyone who talks on the stream is Ryan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is just it's, I'm just, a, it's a common now. Whenever yeah. I'm not Anyone here. Anyone who's I'm on Dr. Shetty's stream is Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I'm not here, I try to guess who's talking by sound of voice. I'll tell you where you need to have, where you really need to have the, um, the love internally. Hibbatullah Khanzadi, he's got he's to rally his troops. He's got to make the people love him. you got to make the common people love you. Don't worry about the elite intellectuals and the liberals. They're going to be against you. They're, they're useless, by the way. All right? The elites and the intellectual that you need the business leaders and the people. The business leaders will fund your country, and the uh, and you need the common folk who are going to support you, and you need their hearts. So he should do a, a, a tour. Of course, all this is easier said than done. Do a tour, and give all these nice speeches about how much you love them. Okay. He said, "Thank you. Three thousand people have given him the oath of allegiance. We congratulate everyone on the victory." that led to the liberation of our country and the subsequent establishment of the Islamic system. The victory of the Afghan Jihad is a great reward for the whole nation and especially the people of Afghanistan. In these 20 years that everyone has sacrificed, they are tired. I wish health to the families of the martyrs and the orphans and whoever supports our Jihad in word, deed, and morals. Dear brothers, the success of the Afghan Jihad is a source of pride, not only for Afghans, but also for Muslims around the world. And all religious people around the world are happy with the victory of the Taliban. Now the Muslims of the world are waiting for the slogan uh, of peace and security. Okay. Let me restate my general position on all Islamic governments. In general, if there's a guy who prays and fasts, respects God and his prophet, and there's a party on one side, and there's a secular group on the other side, in general, I'm going to sh be rooting for the guy who prays and fasts and respects Allah and his prophet. That doesn't mean that I'm standing and stamping any approval, which my approval means nothing in the first place, right, to everything that they do. Just in case someone says, oh, you're supporting them? Well, they did X. And they bring me something far and wide, right, from the, from the bad things that they do. Of course they're going to do bad things. I don't support everything that they do. Okay? But in general, as a general spirit, I'd rather someone like that then you could deal with them. You could work with them. We speak the same language rather than somebody far away that's basically like an atheist. Okay? Uh, or a secularist that we can't even talk. Your name, young man? Talha. Turn on Talha's mic and take the mic next to you so you can talk. You're on the podcast. <laughs> Prince of Persia's little brother. Over here. Pull it over. New Maliki. Huh? New Maliki. He's that's a new Maliki. Let's not get ahead of us. We got two, <laughs> two Persian Maliki. <laughs> The American war with us was not for land or air, but for faith and ideas. I don't think so, but you can say that if you want, as for PR purposes. Okay. Don't they Americans always do that? They're fighting us for our freedom. Like we care if you... Uh, but for our faith and ideas, and it will continue until the day of judgment. The world has no value for things that displease God. That is why we have defeated the world. I like this speech. The world does not want the Islamic Emirate to be independent and they want things to be done with their reference and they are interfering in our internal affairs. If you use an atomic bomb on us, we will still not take a single step against what is displeasing to God. Uh, I like it. Next, he says, killing Muslims has never been our goal. We only kill Muslims for retaliation. If Afghans were killed in the operation, it's because the infidels were their shield. Killing Afghans has never been our goal. 20 years ago, no one could talk about Sharia. He was imprisoned, tortured, beaten. As a result of this jihad, the call to God was released. The principle in Islam is to give up one's desires and surrender completely to God's law. Okay? If you do not, then the claim you have is false. If there is a gap between the ulama and the rulers, security will never be ensured. The jihad of the common people is to carry out the rulings and the decisions of the ulama. Our main goal is security, peace, peaceful life under the Islamic banner. If there is security in the country, the economy will provide for itself. 
Do not rely on foreign aid. Unite and build your own country. Why are the Afghans only people speaking common sense these days? Right? What are investors afraid of? Come and build a few companies to build the economy. Should we go there? <laughs> Those who live and conspire abroad should know that people do not want you. I l- this is a much better statement than that other uh, 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 list. That must have been translated wrong. Okay? Come and use general amnesty. Do not destroy security. And if they destroy security, they will be dealt with in public interest. I like that. Sheikh Hibatullah also reassured neighboring countries that the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan harbors no ill will toward them. But he did not mention the reopening of girls' schools. Okay. See, uh, the thing is, the women are half of your crew. And they're the leaders of your families. So you want them to be the most educated. Okay? But the education has to be like, it's the content of the education that matters. Also, not, who owns those educated. schools as well? Who are, who are the founders? Who, who runs these schools? Yeah. That's the question. That's a big thing. That's it's a big like question. What, um, Mahmoud Effendi, he said, like, don't go to the schools. He didn't mean don't get an education. He of meant course. don't go to the Western schools. When, Mahmoud, when Sheikh Mahmoud Effendi said to the, to the women of the tariqah, you're not, by the way, the men and the women were not allowed to go to secular schools. It's not about education. It's about what kind of education, right? We don't want some liberals teaching our kids and some kuffar and some atheists, right? That's the difference. But if, you, if you're going to ask me, if half your population, you need their support, okay? Okay. How are you? Are you scrolling, uh, Oz? Are you able to scroll? On that? No, on on the picture. Yeah. Well, the, the nice. other the other problem okay. with this too is. Uh, yes. We were talking the other day also about the in the uh, abortion conversation. They talk about how like a lot of. Uh, male doctors get into OB and, and just uh, male doctors in OBGYN. They things got, like that. They so you, if, if you have if you have if you have a whole populate a whole the entire gender educated. Yeah. Where do you fill that? How, how do you fill position? some basic services? How well, are you scrolling? That's just one example. Us? There's a lot of other... How are you scrolling? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? That's a good thing. The wizard. <laughs> He's the wizard. He won't even tell us. He's the wizard. It's just something. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to go down or up? Do you want to no. Uh, you, it does, whatever you want. I'm down, though. I'm on a, a different article now. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, I'm on the article that is called Afghanistan Leader Pledges to Divine. So when I look at it... Um, this, because this, this, the women thing is is the biggest issue, probably, right. right? Now you want them to educate, but I would say to the West, I don't want you educating them. Right. That's the difference, yeah. right? I don't want you you guys educating us. Now, if it's something just like a secular subject, like science or engineering, fine. Okay. So, Sheikh Hibat, uh, By the way, let me tell you why school is actually more important for. School is actually more effective, let me put it this way. It's more effective for women than for men. Men do not learn best from schooling. They learn best from experience and like a little bit of reading on the side, right? That is the best education for a man. Putting men in school and grown men in a school, it weakens them, if you ask me my personal opinion. Let them get experience, then let them do an hour, two, three hours of theory in the beginning of the day, and then get a life experience afterwards, hands-on life experience, okay? And to be part of a real-time mission, whatever it is, installing a dishwasher, yep. a real-time, real-world thing. But I mean, if you look at the majority of people, yeah. um, you know, where do they end up in terms of their careers and professions? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, plumbers and, yeah. you know, factory workers and something, things like that. Something that what has exactly impact. were they doing for those 12 years? You know, like they were sitting in classrooms for eight, nine hours a day. Waste of time. Waking up at 7 a.m. And that's it. You know, like just sitting in a classroom. Mm-hmm. What do you think that's going to produce? It's not producing anything. Nothing. You know, like if, they, if that's the end result mm-hmm. to make them become plumbers and, you know, yeah. like that kind of thing. Mechanics. Not to say that there's anything wrong with it. But at least teach them the trade earlier. You know, this let is, them do something more enjoyable with their lives. He could have been a plumber by 16. Yeah. He, well, could, they, they, uh, he could have been like a, an assistant yeah. by 15. Vocational schools. But you know, yeah. in, in uh, so like here, vocational schools are always seen as like the fallback for like it's failed, a fallback, failed yeah. students. Uh, a friend of mine lived in Germany for a little while and he said vocational schools there 
are basically just like any other school, but you are just you don't want to do like the standard education. You know you want to get into, you know, yeah. the type of labor force. So uh, you go into those schools earlier, like kind of like what you said. You start earlier. Yeah, and you get that education, and you're respected for it, and you're paid well for it. It's not seen as like, uh, oh, you're just a plumber, you're just this. It's like a respectable profession. You get paid yeah. well for it. You know, it's fund your education for that is funded by the state. So listen, listen to my theory of education. High school, you spend, let's say, half the day, from nine a.m., eight a.m., whatever, until about noon, studying theory. Cut out gym class. Cut out. All these silly electives. Theory. From then you have lunch. After lunch, you will be assigned to a business, a real shop, a hospital, anything that's real on the earth. And you will work for free. And you will get graded. And your grade is going to be no different than your other forms of employment. Did the boss like you? Was, were you useful, right? If so, you could spend three months at a bagel shop. You think that you're not going to learn anything? You're going to learn how to run a business. Like, where does the dough come from? Where do the workers come from? Like, how much money does a worker get? How much money? How do you calculate the cost of a bagel? You could learn a lot of stuff. Next two months, three months, he works in a different industry completely, like like healthcare, volunteering at a hospital. So you got all these businesses. They're going to have Free, free volunteers, free labor, right? And these kids will learn so much more, right? And if you get fired because you're a bum, you get an F in the class. That's your grade. You either pass or fail or something in the middle. Like, yes, I would take him back. No, he's a complete bum. And then, or something in the middle, he's good, but he needs improvement. So that's it. <coughs> now you got a kid who spent half, a d- half of his days for four years do you think now he's going to go to college and waste time or he knows exactly what he wants to do? He's, not, he's going to know what he wants to do. He's going to know what he loves. And that's the... Now, women, though, I find them to far more love theoretical education. Like, they do so well in school. I've seen it over and over and over from between girls and boys that, like, they're, they, they love the, um, the, the current setting of the way it is. Right? Anyway, that's my theory on things. Anyway... Next topic, he, or next, we continue. He says here. I, uh, IEA, IKEA, uh, Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan, spokesman Zab- Zabihullah Mujahid. That's a great PR man. Zabihullah, right? The slaughter of Allah, which is basically Sayyidina Ismail, and Sayyidina Abdullah, father of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was a Hanif, okay? Um, Mujahid is his last name. Okay, they, he should cut that. He should change his name to Zabih Mujahid, slaughterer Mujahid. That's a PR guy. Okay. Anyway, he says he would respect the decision of those at the meeting, but the final say on girls' education is up to the supreme leader. Why does it need to say? Do you want the mom of your kids and the heart of your household to be an ignorant person? Ignorant people do stupid things. Right. Meanwhile, Deputy IEA Chief and Acting Interior Minister Sirajuddin Haqqani also addressed the meeting on Friday, saying the world was demanding inclusive government and girls' education, but the issues needed to... So, okay, what's the opposite? What is the alternative? Ignorant women? How does that benefit your society or your family? Right? Okay, educated guy marries ignorant woman. Well, number one, she's going to get taken advantage of. But number two, is he even going to enjoy that? Like, what are you going to talk about? Do you think ignorant women sit doing nothing all day and doing ibadah? They can't even do ibadah because they're ignorant, right? So I don't even see how this is an issue. What I do see as an issue is what education, okay? The gathering is about trust, interaction. We are here to make our future according to Islam and national interests. Mulvi, Muhammad Ismail said of the Afghan scholars, Afga- Afghanistan is a historical country. It is mentioned in the Hadiths, Khurasan. Islam came here in the first century, and the companions fought here in Kabul. That's true. 
Praise be to God, Islam reached Afghanistan in the first century of Islam and trained thousands of Islamic scholars, thinkers, and conquerors. Okay? The mountains also helped Afghanistan stay, um, steer clear of being conquered. The reason people cannot conquer these lands is, number one, the heart of the people, but number two, they are also aided by these mountains. But there are many mountainous countries that do get conquered because they don't have the heart. Okay, and these people have a lot of heart. Uh, trans inclusion. Next story. Trans inclusion means Muslims. I'm not reading it. I'm not up for nope. getting the jassy in my eyes with this more trans stuff. We'll sort of ridiculous. That. What's that? We're gonna skip it. We're gonna skip the story on trans inclusion means Muslim inclusion. I already got the synopsis. The synopsis of it is that when you allow trans, the hijabi women are excluded. So if a trans is allowed into a locker room by mere identity, he identifies as a man, as a woman, but he's fully a man. He hasn't taken hormone therapy. He hasn't taken any other okay, uh, therapy, uh, therapy. And he's allowed in the women's locker room. It's allowed. Now the women there are excluded. The Muslim woman who has to cover herself in front of a man, a biological man, is included because most in Islam biology and gender is one that's why we don't have these issues biology and gender is one it, you your gender is basically determined by your biology next article new documentary alleges West Midlands police framed Muslims in terror trial that's the article that we're going to read the three musketeer terror plot this is called mm, but there are four guys so the three musketeers got themselves one more guy advocacy group cage is screening a documentary around the country which alleges that west midlands police framed four muslim men who are currently serving life in prison for terrorism this is important because they're mudloom and the mudloom deserves our support and our du'a. If so far we, you know, if the documentary is true. At the documentary's launch event in Birmingham last Friday, attended by around 250 people, the Birmingham Four alleged police corruption in the case of four men. Navid Ali, Khubayb Hussein, Muhib Rahman, and Tahir Aziz. They were convicted of terrorism in 2017 following a sting operation by the West Midlands Police. Reading all this website sort of always makes me uh, have good memories back to the time that I lived in England because this is a UK-based website. So most of the... And there's a lot of news in England. There's not a lot of news here. Serious accusations of wrongdoing were made in the documentary by the case lawyers... Stephen Kemlish and Gareth Pierce, as well as the sister of one of the convicted men, Mariam Hussein, all three strongly believe a miscarriage of justice occurred. The accusations include that police officer Vincent planted evidence to frame the men by putting a bag into a car with incriminating items. Obvious. Vincent described events in police notes that had not ta taken place yet. He, he, he put things in notes of things that never happened. One of the trial jurors had a crush on the police officer, but was not recused. It's a little bit, how do you know that, right? Unless there's like a text message or something. Officers spoke to each other regularly during the trial to get their stories straight. There was no DNA or CCTV evidence. So Stephen Kamlish said, this case particularly stands out from others as a miscarriage of justice. All the evidence, starting from the beginning right to the end, has so many features that were palp palpably false, made up, fake, lies right from the beginning. Any open-minded observer observing the case and knowing the evidence would have realized that the case was a fit-up, a miscarriage of justice organized by a small number of police officers. Gareth Pierce said, what was emerging in the trial, officers in touch with each other, when they were giving evidence, meeting in laybys to discuss the evidence in advance, inappropriate knowledge of what evidence is going to be found. So they make up their stories. 
all of that, if you had been representing somebody who was wrongly convicted and you came upon this evidence years later, it would be the key to the door. This uh, would be evidence you could have never dreamed of, of clear police complicity. We cannot believe the jury could believe the prosecution's case. All right. And it alleges that the reason that the men were convicted was because of a number of terror incidents that happened during the trial, which made the atmosphere unconducive to acquittal. It's like being in a time warp. Cases in the 70s and the early 80s, all right, in the, uh, when the police, and in fact, more than anybody, the West Midlands police, fabricated evidence. To such an extent that the squad responsible was completely disbanded Dozens of defendants, their convictions were quashed. It's a reprint of the past. You get the point? All right. And so these two guys, these two lawyers are trying to defend these Muslim guys, right? And if you want to see this, uh, you need to keep, if you want to see this documentary, you could see it. You could watch it. Uh, what's the documentary called? They don't really... You can check the CAGE website. Okay. Where are the keys? Here. You need the keys? Here you go. All right. Are we done? Anything else on... Uh, let's see how the comments are looking here. A lot of people are asking for a dua for shifa. Dua is shifa. All right, exactly. we're gonna we're gonna make the dua of Wednesday soon. Okay. I'll give everyone a shifa for those who are sick. All right. What else you want to read from this website, us? Any, any, anything else that's important for the Ummah to know or that's juicy? All right, one more. We're going to read this one. You know, this is another blasphemy. You know, the Haramein al-Sharifain is only allowed, Muslims, Muslims are only allowed to go there. But 50 Zionist business leaders visit the Prophet's mosque. we got some serious munafiqeen running stuff. Avi Jurish is writing in the Jerusalem Post. Okay. The visit was meant to promote mutual understanding, respect, and tolerance. Non-Muslims are banned from visiting Mecca and Medina. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, inna man mushrikuna najas, fala yaqrabu al-masjid al-harama ba'd amihim hadha. Mushrikeen, non-believers are not allowed into these lands by the verse of the Quran in Surah At-Tawbah. Okay? So, on the road to Medina, Saudi officials recently removed signs reading Muslims only. Okay? And the last, last month, 50 Jewish business leaders closely affiliated with Israel visited the Prophet's mosque and Masjid and Nabawi. Where are all the shiuch? Of course they're going to get in jail if they say anything. Okay. Does this extend to the just the haram itself or the city limits as well? The city limits. The city limits, well, yeah. not, nowhere near. Yeah. There are other hadiths that prohibit this from non-Muslims entering the holy cities. Then they may say, why? Well, why do you want to go? Well, you don't believe in it in the first place. So your ticket to entrance is belief in it. You're not gonna, we're not going to bring in someone who disrespects it. Am I allowed to go? Would they want me to go to the Pride March when we're against it? We're going to go and ruin their mojo, right? So likewise, you don't believe in this, so we don't want you coming and ruin our momentum and ruining our energy here. And what's your business? Why would you want to go in the first place? This is part of a larger transformation, not a good transformation, in Saudi society. The delegation compromised members of 13 countries. Many were nervous before departure. Some wondered whether they would be allowed to enter the kingdom, be restricted, 
or be limited in what they could say or be able to move around freely. In the end, though, the opportunity to promote friendship, peace, and collaboration was strong enough to overcome their doubts. Wherever we went, we found our delegation members and the Saudis shared deep family, personal, and business experience. We began to explore business collaboration. It felt like old friends and family being reunited. Not uncomfortable and guarded as many in the delegation had envisioned. No, it's only us, regular Muslims, who want to go and then we get told off by the police for honoring the Prophet or something. Medina was sublime. Our guide took us into the open-air courtyard filled with massive umbrellas outside the prayer complex, which accommodates a million worshippers. We saw people from every corner of the globe speaking dozens of languages. Now, I'm not saying that they might not get a good result from it, but it's still, because as Ibn Taymiyyah has a famous saying, he says, the muqtadia, people of bid'ah, they're the best at da'wah, because they bend all the rules, right? But then it's up to the fuqaha when those people become Muslim to mop up, right? And here you go. So, yeah, maybe someone will have a, uh, a good experience, but that doesn't make the, the rule correct, or the, what they're at, the, are their action correct. When I sat down in sight of the mosque's green dome, the resting place of the prophet and two of the four righteous caliphs with a vacant place for Jesus, I went through my own daily meditation process and thought deeply about the long arc of history. I looked at my fellow delegates and knew that each of them was forever changed by coming to the kingdom and to this holy place. The Saudi authorities have not commented on the report, but are widely perceived to have given the green light to the UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan to normalize relations with Israel. This has sparked speculation that Riyadh will eventually follow in the same course, and that ties with the UAE conference that we just read with the rabbi. It's all tied together. In May, Zionist rabbis from America, Italy, and France participated in an interfaith event in Saudi Arabia organized by the Muslim World League. They're laughing. They're laughing in our faces. They're laughing. You know, they think that we are so dumb. We are, though. And we know? are dumb. It's These leaders way. are just complete. They have their intention must be for business. That's why. Let's see what this guy who's meditating in the Masjid in Nebuwi, let's see his reaction when the business deal goes false, it goes sour, right? Let's see what he says when the business stops. Of course, if someone's going to sign a contract with you and you're going to find millions of dollars coming in, of course you're going to have a wonderful experience. If you took me to, I don't care where, if there's a contract that I'm going to sign at the end of it that's nice, I better have a good time, right? I'm going to have a great time, no matter where you take me and whatever you feed me. I'm going to have a wonderful time because of the contract that's on the end of the tunnel there. Let's see what they say once those contracts go sour. In uh, Last year, a huge information leak revealed that several Muslim nations, including Saudi, bought Israeli spyware. What did I tell you? They're all comfortable, and we're the ones suffering. They're like at war with the regular common Muslim, but they're all at peace with these people. In 2020, Netanyahu secretly flew to Saudi to meet Crown Prince, MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, and Mike Pompeo. In 2018, Saudi opened its airspace for commercial Israeli flights. Okay? And also inaugurated Air India, all right, between New Delhi and Tel Aviv. So they go from New Delhi, where do they stop in Saudi and then go to Tel Aviv or something? So all sorts of Cardolos running the show. That's who's running the show in the Ummah. Cardolo is running the show. And if you don't know who Cardolo is, the first season of Air Tyrol, Cardolo is the Munafiq who's working with the Crusaders. He's the Munafiq. And at the end, what happens to him at the end in the last episode? He gets beheaded. He gets his neck slit. Okay. I, like how you, I like how you Italianize the name. Cardolo, the Cardolo? Yeah, Cardolo. <laughs> it's Italian. Cordulo? Cordulo, no, yeah, Cardolo. Cordolo. <laughs> All right. So Cardolo's running the show. Let's stop here for comments, questions, and answers. And then let's do the dua of Hezbin Nasr and the dua of Wednesday between Dohra and Asr. People should be really amping up and increasing their ibadah in these days. Um, 
this Wednesdays is always a little bit different when, as we're reading the affairs of the Ummah, and, and really it should be called the uh, calamities of the Ummah, in most cases. It's all bad news, right? There's nothing like, oh, a Muslim had some great victory. You know when Irtarul, when they conquered that crusader castle? castle yeah. When they won, and they went in, and I saw the Muslim characters, like, victorious in the castle, I was like, my first reaction was, oh, that's what it looks like? How a Muslim <laughs> wins? When a Muslim wins? Because we haven't won a battle in 500 years. All right, the armies of Islam have not won a battle that's, like, related to... Like, they have not won a battle of any significance for over 500 years. You know, they were saying that was the, that was the, one of the major appeals of Arturo. Yeah. Because, you know, there was, remember, if, uh, in, in, like, when I was growing up, there was, like, Omar Mukhtar, there was, um, I forget, a couple other, like, uh, big movies, yeah. or shows that had come out. Um, and they're all victims, right? But they're all victims, and then they all yeah. die, right? So, like, and again, uh, you know, Omar Mukhtar is a... Omar guy, Mukhtar is great, but he's the, and the losing. Yeah, but he was, yeah. uh, he was on, a, on a side that eventually... Lost. He lost, he, he, was, he was killed, and, yeah. and all that. And there's a couple other movies that came out around that time in the 80s and 90s and stuff that showcased that. And they said that the, really the biggest appeal about Arturo is that this is the first time in recent cinema, you know, or in cinema in general, that a religious Muslim leader is portrayed as a resistance to non-Muslim entity and wins. Yeah. Right? And that they continue to win. And, and you know, if you've, if you've watched, like, the whole show, it continues on to more victory. And it basically yeah. sets the tone for Osman, who and he's and he's to grow the empire. And they're, they're <coughs> taking their issues... And their mission and yeah. their vision to the world, right? right? Not constantly playing defense. Right. And people say, "Oh, well, the world's complicated." No, the world is—it's—it's it's a very simple equation in the world. Things are the way they are because certain people wanted them that way, and they wanted it long enough, sometimes for centuries, and they had to pass that desire down until it happened. Mm -hmm. That's how simple life is. <laughs> you want something some way, right? for a long enough time and you work towards it it'll end up happening right so yeah maybe you get set to the side you lose a lot in the beginning you get laughed at you're treated as an outlaw we're outlaws today everything we're saying here is politically incorrect the entire YouTube channel is politically incorrect right we're just not big enough for them to deplatform us right but the everything we're, we're outlaws today but the outlaws of today, there won't be outlaws if they stick with it. Eventually, that becomes the norm. Here's a question. I'm not here 9-11 says. I'm a UK Muslim whose parents are from India, and I have cousins there. How should Indian Muslims defend the Prophet's honor without getting lynched? Uh, I think that hijra might be mandatory. doesn't have to be from India, from cities to cities. Because when I asked around, are you from India or Persia? Pakistani. Pakistani. Okay. I just insulted him. I asked him from, <laughs> from India. Is his mic on? Is yeah. his mic on? I got in so much hot water one time when I was in Morocco studying for the first time and I didn't really hang out with Pakistanis. I'd never like m hung out with subcontinental people. All we grew up growing up was just a Egyptians and Palestinians. And Pakistanis, we knew they had like some mosques. They, we knew they existed. But we never, hung, there was no mingling. <clears throat> right so I go to Rutgers the first year and I know they're Pakistani people and that, then I went to Morocco this some, that first summer and someone says I'm Pakistani and I says I'm Indian I said it's all the same right it's like the subcontinent it's all the same <laughs> right oh my goodness they got such a reaction they had such a reaction when I said that but of course like but for the Muslims I would assume that the Muslim Indian Muslims have a sympathy towards Pakistan they should Right? I can understand that a Pakistani doesn't want to be called an Indian because it's a mainly Hindu country, right? But an Indian Muslim should not be offended, say they're Pakistani, right? They should have some sympathy for you, right? Anyway. By the way, I have an innovation uh, for Pakistani cuisine. This is <laughs> really is <laughs> good. Uh, here we go. Okay, so to, to get off of serious caffeine addiction, I started getting into tea. Tea was too light for me. So I take the leaves, put it in, put some water, put some carnation, which is evaporated milk, and put some regular milk. One-third each, 
right? And then I boil that on the tea leaves. And then it's really strong. It gets you going in the morning. But it's not a caffeine addiction, right? It's not like a strong caffeine. Then one day, I said, oh, there's oat milk in the fridge. So part water, part regular milk, part oat milk. Oat milk chai. Yeah, people drink it. It's already a thing? Yeah, there's like shops that sell it. It's already yeah, a thing? Oat milk sure, chai yeah. is already a thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The hipster so, Pakistani shops? With the hipster days. Hipster, <laughs> hipster days. Okay. Hipster days. Yes. <laughs> um, Hamza Zai is saying, no, we won in Afghanistan. Yes, but it's not, it, it is a victory, but it's more of a victory of not getting abused, right? And I wouldn't consider that a victory. That's like a, def- a successful defense. But really, was it a successful defense? How many Muslims died? They managed, and they got away with it. The Russians, they went in, they did damage. Yes, you kicked them out, but the Russians went on. And So when I say victory, I mean like, when are we the authors, the subjects in the sentence? The Muslims are the objects of the sentence, right? We get things done to us. In this case, in Afghanistan, the Russians, the British before them, and the Americans, they're still doing stuff to us, but they just failed at it. And they partly succeeded. They stole so many resources. I'm sure there's a lot of natural gas that they stole. Okay. Bilal is asking, how did the Muslims oppose or defeat these oppressors, renegade governments, idolatry by ourselves? How, we're, this is a good question. We're not, we, what do we have? Words? You start with ideas and mentalities. You start with a mentality. And you start with the idea, you have to understand that Things are the way they are because human beings, no different than me and you, wanted them that way. There's no other reason. They wanted them that way, whatever the reason that they had. So to start, to change something, you, you have to displace it with another image. Like, where is your image of success? You have to have an image of success first. Um, then you displace it. So you don't keep telling yourself, oh, how do we avoid losing? Where is your energy going? You've got to conquer. To losing. You've got to start talking about conquering, right? And the Prophet said them, when this, uh, the digging of the trench, they were digging the trench and they had trouble and the Prophet saw nervousness on the face of the Sahaba because we're not going to dig this trench in time before the 10,000 Ahzab come and kill us. When the Prophet wasallam saw this nervousness on their face, how did he change it? He didn't say, we're going to dig successfully and defend. No. That doesn't energize you, Right? What he said was, he struck the stone and a spark came out. The spark was extra big, basically, and a miracle from Allah. Like a, you, when you hit an axe to a rock, there's a spark, but this spark was huge. Prophet wasallam said, that spark is Yemen, which we're going to conquer. Then he did it again. This is Persia, which we're going to conquer. Another spark. That's Syria, which we're going to conquer. So... They're thinking now of con- they're thinking of themselves as conquerors. When you think of yourself as a conqueror, defending is easy. Digging a, a ditch is easy. So he planted into their minds an image of victory and success and greatness. So then dealing with these 10,000 now is going to be easy. You can't think better than you feel. You have to remember this. So if you want to change people's minds, you've got to change how people feel. Right? And that's why the language in this document it's got to change. The language is defensive. Remember that those 11 points that we just read earlier, the first document read, language is like defensive. I want strong language. Even if it's a bunch of hot air. Right? Well, what's the end result? Is there any going to be a result any different? Then I'd rather feel good with a bunch of hot air and actually feel strong about myself. If the, if the end result of, uh, of, of that, all those threats, and the polite thing is going to be the same result. Then why don't we go with the strong language, right? Uh, those who defected to other nations and are plotting against us, we know who you are and we're hunting them down. Listen to this. I had on a miniature scale, every Rabi al-Awwal, the first, uh, we, we have a mawlid at the masjid. The first year that we did this, there was a person in the masjid on a can- secret campaign against the mawlid. And he would remove and turn our poster upside down. If it was on the wall, he would take it down. We didn't have cameras. Uh, he would leave anti molid pamphlets all over the place. 
And every day I come into the masjid and I seem like, why am I fighting with this person who's not even showing himself? He has no authority to do this. So I went on the mimbar and I said, there is a person who's putting anti-Mawlid pamphlets and who is taking down our Mawlid posters and the big poster that we have hanging up on the easel, he's turning it around. I said, brother, we have identified you. Okay? Don't even try to run or hide because we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened again after that. Nothing happened again. Right? I like never knew who he was. extended your contract for another 10 years. <laughs> this is, this is we stuff. never had an issue. <laughs> we never had an issue ever again, subhanAllah, with this guy. You don't have to run. And, uh, 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 and you don't even have to come and confess. We're coming for you. That's what I told him. Okay. <laughs> Nimra says... I never came across such a hadith. What is the hadith? Which hadith? Someone once told me Muslims can't be ruled by non-Muslims for more than 100 years. I never saw such a hadith. Never saw such a hadith. Muslim, Non-Muslims are forbidden from entering Mecca and Medina. I wanted to ask if there's any difference of opinion uh, between people of the book and polytheists. No, in that case, people of the book and polytheists are one. If you drink chai that often, you'll get addicted the same way as coffee. Probably true. Uh, Shockwave says, put Ruavza in coconut water. Ruavza, yeah. That sounds good, actually. Though. Or Ruavza also in Sprite Ruhavza, and ice, yeah. with yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. It's okay. like uh, Shirley Temple. Muhammad <laughs> Sain Gurkani. <laughs> Muhammad, where is my radiallahu an Abu Bakr and Umar and Aisha and Uthman? Where is it? That Muhammad Sain Gurkani, the first comment that you come every single time, okay, is may Allah be pleased with Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Aisha. Type it, and I'm not gonna address any of your questions until you type it. Okay? That's don't even say salamu alaikum. Put it in there. Gonna we're gonna oxyclean that Shiism out of his heart. Okay? <laughs> He's from the Maldives. He the same converted guy. into being Shia. We're going to oxy clean it out of his heart. Type it. We're gonna, he's going to type Wasn't it until one day he's going to enjoy it. Was he on one of your other right? live streams that typed the same thing? I thought he did. He half, did. He went halfway. He's a writer. Abu Bakr, he's, he's a writing. Writer, yeah. All right, I let's did, see. I thought he went halfway last time. I want to yeah, see it. Yeah, it was halfway. Yeah. It was halfway. <laughs> Abu Bakr, <laughs> Omar, This is not politics, bro. Aisha. Yeah. Okay. He's saying leave politics aside, shit. Keep saying it. Keep writing it. And one day you're going to mean it. It's going to settle into your heart. Okay? Listen. This is Wednesday for the affairs of the Ummah. Yeah, it's not cozy, fuzzy spirituality. Life is not like that. Life is only partly spirituality, partly fiqh and aqidah, but there's also real life that you have to talk about. Sophia says, I had a question. I listened to the Mad Mem Luke's podcast, and you mentioned Prophet Lutz was destroyed with the Qawm because his wife... Because she turned around, yes. Because she, she loved them, secretly. I heard the reason she got punishment is because she betrayed Lutz. She went to the people and told them they had guests, and that's why they came to their house. Yes, she betrayed Lutz in many different ways. And the proof was that she finally turned out. That was like the, the, the last sign that um, she really, in fact, uh, was a lover of them more than the truth. And we have many of them, too. We have many. Wife of Prophet Lut. Mra'at al-Lut. Arafat Mimiko says. Firstly, what time is it? What time is it? Yeah. 2.50. 2.50. All right. I got it. We're going to wrap up today in 10 minutes. Question. I've always known that all non-Muslims are forbidden. We read this. Does revealing your awrah break will do? No. It does not at all. Revealing your awrah never breaks or will do. Muhammad... Why are you commenting without my my rida on Sayyidah Aisha? No. You comment and you spread the love of Sayyidah Aisha and the 
she's your mother whether you like it or not. Sophia says, it made me think of the Muslims supporting Qawm al huruf for the sake of inclusion in the workplace. Of course. 100%. Okay. Uga Panda, may Allah protect us from having an evil spouse. Yes. Okay. The love of the Sahaba is faith, religion, not politics. Muslima says, please pray that Allah accepts my dua. Yes, may Allah Ta'ala accept all of your prayers and, yet, and may Allah give you certainty in the ijabah and you strengthen that certainty by doing a lot of ibadah. Recite the Quran regularly. Do ibadah regularly. Let's turn to dua of Hizb and Nasr. We read this dua every Wednesday between uh, Dhuhr and Asr because um, every Wednesday between Dhuhr and Asr there is a Sa'at sa of Ijaba. Take that uh, the bottom bar off to us. There is a um, Sa'at al Ijaba. Okay. And we need that Sa'at al Ijaba. So we're Take advantage of that to respect. If there's a divine offering, you respect that divine offering. Okay? And then we will do three, four minutes of silent dua, everyone for themselves, and then we wrap up for the day. La ilaha illallah al-Marikul Haqqul Mubin, la ilaha illallah al-Marikul Haqqul Mubin, la ilaha illallah al-Marikul Haqqul Mubin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna fatahna laka fatham mubina, liyaghfir laka Allah, ma taqaddam min dhambika, وما تأخر ويتم نامته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا وكان عند الله وجيها وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نصر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم من الحواريين من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزل هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم وإذ نفسي بالله تعالى من كل ما يسمع بأذنين ويبصر بعينين ويمشي برجلين ويبطش بيدين ويتكلم بشفتين حصنت نفسي بالله الخالق الأكبر من شر ما أخاف وأحذر من الجن والإنس وأن يحضرون عز جاره وجل ثناؤه وتقدست أسماؤه ولا إله غيره اللهم نجارك في نهور آدائي وأعوذ بك من شرورهم وتحيلهم ومكرهم ومكائدهم أطفئ نار من أراد بعداوة من الجن والإنس يا حافظ يا حفيظ يا كاف يا محيط سبحانك يا رب ما أعظم شأنك وعز سلطانك تحصنت بالله وبأسماء الله وبآيات الله وملائكة الله وأنبياء الله ورسل الله والصالحين من عباد الله حصنت نفسي بلا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الله محرسني بعينك التي لا تنام واكنفنا بك نفك الذي لا يرام وارحمنا بقدرتك علينا فلا نهلك وأنت تقتنا ورجاؤنا يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين اكفني شر كل طارق يطرق بليل أو نهار إلا طارق يطرق بخير إنك على كل شيء قدير بسم الله أرقي نفسي من كل ما يؤذي ومن كل حاسد الله شفائي بسم الله رقيت اللهم رب الناس أذهب الباس إيش في أنت الشافي وعافي أنت المعافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر السقم ولا ألم يا كافي يا وافي يا حميد يا مجيد 
ارفع عني كل تعب شديد واكفني من الحدي والحديد والمرض الشديد والجيش العديد واجعل لي نورا من نورك وعزا من عزك ونصرا من نصرك وبهاء من بهائك وعطاء من عطائك وحراسة من هرستك وتأييد من تأييدك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام والمواهب العظام نسألك أن تكفينا من شر كل ذي شر إنك أنت الله الخالق الأكبر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والحمد لله رب العالمين ظاهرا وباطنا وعلى كل حال يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. We have one more announcement we forgot to make that you can donate uh, your qurbani abroad to Ifriqiya today, uh, this year. All right, let's take a look at what this poster exactly says. All right, so this is Ame Conscience. If you're a French speaker, this is a French organization that you can go to their website, okay, um, and here's the poster, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Operation Eid al-Adha, third edition, and this year, again, they will be in Kenya, there will be a 139 CHF, that's the cost, I guess, $139 a sheep, the sheep of Kenya are much cheaper, we have, here it's $400, Okay, there it's 139 dollars or 133 euros. Okay, they will send you video proof on WhatsApp of your udhiyah. It is supervised halal slaughtering, and go to maconscience.org backslash aid. Again, maconscience backslash dot org backslash aid. Okay. So again, that is where you can do your udhiya, and again, you can support this stream at patreon.com backslash Safina Society, okay? And we will look for one more time, give Mr. Maldive one more chance for his rida on Abu Bakr and Omar Uthman Ali, and we don't see it, so he is going to get put in the penalty box next time. Should we ban him? Huh? Should we ban him? Well, you get in the put in the penalty box. We need the rida, taraddi it's called. We need that first. Okay? All right, folks. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk wal asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
قلبي شيفا بيرم